Being your best you with Dr. Keir. Being your best you with Dr. Keir. I'm exceptional, thank you. How are you today? I'm so good. Blocks to bold, brass to gold, better to best. We all get caught in mental mazes, believing that we have to live the way others see us or being taught to think things through. Dr. Keir is an agent of change using Geotran human programming and activations to quickly and easily release people from the automatic patterns and inner glitches that block their healthy, wealthy, happy life. Instead of going where our innate circuitry takes us, being in alignment with you is the best way to create your best life. Are you ready to be your best self? Being your best you with Dr. Keir. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome to this week's uh, adventure or conversation, as the case may be. By the time this broadcast, I will be in France. And as you see, I have my little beret here. And we're going to have another fantastic conversation with Dr. Kevin Richardson. And today's topic is insomnia. And here he is. Hey. hey. <laughs> you see, he is equipped as well. We are a paradox. Yeah, we are. <laughs> anyway. So, insomnia. Oh, gosh. This is something that certainly my clients have uh, definitely battled with, and I do myself, and I think you do too. Am I right? I do. I do. Yeah. But the good news is, you know, because a client asked me, I went and searched out my G-Trans stuff to see how we can help people with this. And I actually found a checklist I had been looking for for the last 10 years at least. Yeah. Wow. And I know that you also have lots to say on this topic and lots of ways of helping people. I do. Uh -huh. I do. You know, so insomnia it can be rather elusive as to what the causes are. That is so true. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we just don't know. But in reviewing the literature, it all seems to revolve around energy levels and turning off thoughts. <laughs> well, I and obviously, you know, from a geotrime perspective, we're looking at we're looking at stress. Um, there are aspects in the physical about, right. for instance, uh, uh, you know what what you're eating just before you go to bed. You know, uh, this connects in with the whole sugar craving thing and what have you. Um, I have a list. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, stress imbalances in, that is to say, insufficient or excess in light, being out in nature, food, uh, breath or oxygen. I can show you a really good clearing right. for that one. Right. Water, too much or too little water, alcohol, obviously, exercise. And then like every other Geotran checklist at the bottom, we have other now, when you and I were talking about this, you very correctly pointed out that something that ought to be on this list is pain or discomfort. Yeah, pain or discomfort. That is huge. And, yeah. you know, something like 64% of the geriatric population suffers from pain, chronic pain. Yeah, yeah. And, and that'll, that'll keep you up at night for sure. That will keep you up at night because with chronic pain, you just can't get comfortable. Right. Yeah. So, 
Well, that's something I know that you know about in your personal experiences. Well. I do. Yeah. I do because I have chronic pain. Yeah. So. Uh, I have insomnia, but it's more stress related. But I do remember that when I broke my leg 20 years ago, uh, because I'm quite restless when attempting to sleep, I actually had to reach down and move my knee in both hands if I wanted to turn over. Wow. So there I was. I was, you know, the pain would wake me up. I, I'd want to turn over, see if I could get a more comfortable position. Then I would be awake for a while because I was in pain. You know, I had to wake up enough to just even yeah. just position. Yeah. But, but, you know, and yes, pain is definitely a big, big, big factor, especially as we age. Um, but in a sense, that's, we can go another level deeper in terms of causes of insomnia. Right. We yeah. can't. We can't. Um, so that's why I was so excited to pick up this checklist that <laughs> I don't even want to tell you about where, where, uh, how, what I had to do to find this list. But in, in the Patreon <laughs> world, that's kind of my job is I, yeah. I keep track of the lists. I keep track of the files. So in a sense, I'm smacking myself for not having got this one earlier, but I got it in the end. So that's the main thing. So um, I actually recreated this part of the checklist into a sort of overall things to check if you are insomniac. Right. Because I remember my teacher, Dorothy Espio, saying years and years ago, look, one of the reasons that maybe you can't sleep. Okay, let me back it up a little bit. We need to sleep. The re there's a reason that sleep deprivation is used as a torture or interrogation technique. Mm -hmm. It's because if you don't sleep, your inner biocomputers don't have the time and space and capacity to actually work on whatever you've been doing during the day. So it takes all those 50,000 sensory impressions and decides which ones are important, which ones are significant to you, and it stores them. Yeah, And that's how your Akashic records are formed. Now, right. all of this is going on in the subconscious. And as you have said in the past, Dr. Kevin, you know, as soon as you go to sleep, that, oh, your subconscious is, that's where your subconscious is working. Obviously, when you mm -hmm. think about it, because when you're awake, that's the only time you can be in the conscious mind. So your sleep, your subconscious is really struggling to integrate whatever has been going on for you that day. Now, what if, this is where Dorothy's, remark came in that I remembered all these years later. What if something, a person or a person's incorrect spirits, I hesitate to use the word demons because that's a very charged word for a lot of people. It's, it's more it neutral than that, you know? I mean, we're not talking about well, you know, horns and tail and all that good stuff. Right. Okay, but what if your subconscious is being badgered yeah, which is constantly mm -hmm. attacked at a right. low level by somebody else and or their incorrect spirits. If this goes on long enough, your subconscious does not want to go to sleep anymore. Because the minute you close your eyes, the minute you shut down that conscious, right. you've got these incorrect spirits in there poking. And it's not, you know, here's the really important part. I mean, this is the part that I find is really, really exciting. It is not, generally speaking, because you are doing something wrong. It's not your fault. It, it's not about you. It's actually. not about it's you. About whoever is badgering you. So, so this is this was the cool checklist that I found, and I wrote up as a bigger checklist, which anybody can get in touch with me or Dr. Kevin, and we'll pass it along to you. And yes. we're really available on Facebook. Yes. So go to Dr. Kevin Richardson, or go to his uh, uh, website. Um, or bot, yeah, which is on the bottom of the screen, or go find me because uh, it, I have an even more unusual name. And you can, <laughs> you, can, you can find me in either of my Facebook groups. One is called Light Me Up Coaching because I love to see people's faces light up when they get it. Yes. And the other one is called Geotran Global. And my main website now is also geotran.global. Very easy to find me. Totally happy to send you a copy of this because you probably need it. Anyway, getting back to the actual technique. So one of the questions, the bottom question on this checklist, which as you see, I have in front of me, is uh, this body person's subconscious, 
And the, we put it that way. We say this body person is because you are a multidimensional being and we want to get all of you, right? Mm -hmm. It's being badgered at night by another's incorrect spirit. In general, this is not because the person is doing something wrong, but is doing something right. And because of this badgering, this person's subconscious is now afraid to go to sleep. How many, and for each one, you identify the person, you identify the incorrect spirit, and you throw it out. Simple, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, here are the conditions. When you are sleeping, <laughs> you're not doing something wrong, you're sleeping. When you are resting, when you are happy, when you are careful, isn't that interesting? When you are weary, you know how your conscious control mm -hmm. slips when you're just exhausted. I've had that all this morning, so hey. It's a good thing we're doing this taping because it's got my conscious engaged again. It's really good. Uh, I always feel better when I do some work, don't you? Aren't you? <laughs> yes. Okay, number six is inspired. So there you are. You're inspired, and maybe you've gone to sleep, and you're thinking, oh, great, my computers are going to give me a really great download, and in the morning, I'm going to wake up in the morning with this great idea, except you're being badgered. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you're not getting the rest. You're not really sleeping. Okay, number seven is at play. Yeah, being playful, um, recreating in the sense of recreation, uh, in love. Boy, does that right. put it? Does that put us all off? Actually, being in love, yes. attacked by somebody else's incorrect spirits, and finally, and this is the one I really like: when you're being perfectly you. Wow. When all of your bits are turning over in the correct direction at the right speed. That's what's mm -hmm. meant by perfection. It's not a static thing. It's a dynamic perfection, right? Right, right. So think about this. Here you are. You are attempting to <laughs> sleep, rest, be happy, be careful. Be, you are weary. Well, you're not trying to be weary. You just are. Uh, yeah. Inspired at play, in recreation, in level perfect. And wow, that is like lighting up a torch for these incorrect spirits to come chomp on you. Right, right. So, shall we just jump right in there, Kevin, and see if you've got any of these going on? Well, um, yeah. Let's yeah. do it. All right. Do it. Okay. So, now that I've got this this whole page, now I'm doing this checklist every night, and I have definitely been sleeping better. So, I, I expect to hear great things from you. Yeah. And... Um, you know, I know that there are people backstage watching this, and if so, they, if they come up with questions, uh, we'll address those very directly also. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm asking for Dr. Kevin, right? And I am muscle testing because I don't actually know his situation. All I can do is ask the questions and get the answers, right? Okay. So this body person is, is not sleeping correctly for him. Right. That's a yes. And we knew that. Okay. This yeah. is because of stress. No. This is because of imbalance. No. And then there's some other questions like this body is processing somebody else's insomnia. No. Because remember people, when you have a physical condition, when you have physical symptoms, the very first thing I'm going to ask is, is it yours mm -hmm. or is it somebody else's? And this was, this was something that I really learned to do when I was working. I had a long-term client who had two giant poodles. And these poodles were always sick, right? Like you and your cats, mm -hmm. Dr. Kevin. Yeah. And you should call me up and say, okay, you know, Jasper's doing such and such or you know, whichever poodle it was. And the very first thing I'd ask is, yeah, but is it their condition or is it your condition that they're processing for you? And 80% of the time, it was her condition. So I'd fix it on her, and then the dog wouldn't have the symptoms anymore. <laughs> so much easier. And no so much lower vet bills, you know? Right. Right. Okay, so then if you're running somebody else's insomnia, I'd be asking, when did you pick it up? Who is it from? What were the circumstances? What needs to change back there? Just the normal G-Trans stuff. Okay, this body person is reliving a pattern from the past in the subconscious at night. Same thing. Basically, it's just instead of it being somebody else, it is actually you. Yours. Yeah. Right. Okay. But none of those are what's going on for you. Isn't that interesting? So we get to question number four, the, the exciting one, which is this body person's subconscious is being badgered at night by another's incorrect spirit. Yes. 
How many? Zero to five. One, two, three. Now, here's where I get out my lovely pad and my fountain pen. And we take notes. Yes. Okay, so we've got Dr. Kevin. He's got insomnia. And there are three. Either three people, each with one incorrect spirit, or it could be the same person who is running three incorrect spirits. It could be either way. We just okay. need to identify. five. One, two, three. This is our map. So first one is, are these all from one person? No. Okay. So are they from three separate people? Yes. The first one is a male is a female person. Second one is a male person. Third one is a male person. Now, y'all understand, you're, you who are watching, you understand what I'm doing is I am muscle testing. Uh -huh. First person is male or female. That's a female. Second person is male. And I can, I can reverse test it. I can say, is female? No. That's a no. It's male. And the third person also. And each of these is using one incorrect spirit to badger Dr. Kevin at night. Yeah. So that makes, just makes it easy us to figure this out okay so who's the who's you get the female person and i'll get what your condition is that they are hijacking okay perfect you're running your system perfectly and this person who is female person female. First, female. first one who comes to your mind is and you can give me initials because we don't care who this is because we don't know who's in your life anyway. And remember, people, this could be somebody from way back. This doesn't have to be right now. No one comes to mind. Okay. So we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to ask you to look at your computer screen behind your eyes. So eyes closed, looking at the blue screen and say, okay, computer, show me who this is. Give me a face, give me a name, because they know. Your subconscious knows who this is. Who's badgering you? And the first one who comes up for you is? You know, I don't remember her name, but it's from childhood. See, and then I'm muscle testing him, say, he's got the right person? Okay. So we're going to say... Gal from childhood. Yeah. All right. Now, and she's getting in there when you're being perfect. Right? And she has an incorrect spirit. And what what is that incorrect spirit? Now, is it in the big four, the big five, or the big six? No. We're actually going to have to listen for it. So if you had to describe this gal in like three words, what would they be? You know, I just vaguely remember. I don't remember specifics. So well, then listen again. We can look in your yeah. computers. Okay, computers, what is this incorrect spirit? Because the information's there. We just don't, it's, we're just bringing it up into the conscious realm. So that we okay. can, yeah. So, incorrect spirit. It's not going to be complicated or sophisticated, not for a kid. Oh, I think. Be, go, go ahead. No, I, 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 I have, think, I have the addictions list out because that's what we're going to talk about in the next program. Right. And I heard it's on the addictions list. So I have this list right here. What did you hear? I heard being liked. Yeah, that's not normally an incorrect spirit. Okay. I, that's interesting. Uh, I am, but I'm hearing it's on this on this list of 171 options. So um, I'm willing to go with what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Self-absorption. Of me or her? 
No, this is her incorrect spirit. This has nothing uh -oh. to do with you. But if you're thinking about a little girl, that's pretty common spirit to have. Okay. Yeah, they're, uh, oh. Oh, my yeah. God. Ah. CS. Yeah. So we have correctly identified this incorrect spirit. That's a yes. So, and you know what to do when we have identified an incorrect person or spirit, right? Are we ready? Whee! Splat. Ah. Which is actually super appropriate if you were a kid at the time. Okay, somebody's asking questions. Steroid medicine gives me insomnia. What can you do? Well, I would I would consider reducing the dosage. Well, talk to your doctor. For yeah. Because yeah. steroid medicine is very, very complicated and it affects the bodies in many different ways. And you don't want to mess with the dosage until after you talk to your doctor. He's right. Let, and let the doctor know that you're experiencing insomnia mm. because that is a side effect of steroidal medicine. Yeah, so, we're, we're primarily looking at the inner workings that create right. insomnia more than the medical journal, the medical yeah because neither well are you considered a medical doctor kevin i'm not no but, i am not but right i worked in healthcare for 44 years yeah so i've oh. i've been around doctors for listen to him <laughs> a long long time <laughs> so yes you know that that's a really good question it is a good question. And it's a very technical answer. Mm. And I'm not qualified to give you an answer on that, but I am qualified to say, really talk with your doctor, get with your doctor, because they can do different things, but coming off steroids is very tricky. And it's, it is not done without the doctor's supervision because coming off steroid medications, can cause bigger issues mm -hmm. so okay well you are absolutely correct and i completely agree with you and let's move on cool so next one okay so this body person now is being badgered by cs's spirit of self-absorption that's a no this body person is 100 clear of that so, you know, here's the interesting thing about having three of these is they're going to tag team. Oh, yeah. So if we've just Not left fair. it at, oh, that's the one we've thrown around. You're good. We're probably going to find out you're not. But we yeah. can pre-test and post-test so that when we get to the end of this pr process, that you are clear of any incorrect spirit that is badgering you at night. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our aim here. To get you no. to 100% clear. Okay, so the next one is a male person. Uh, so, and and what is it? That, what is what are the circumstances here? Is it one to five? Is it six to ten? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Also perfect. See, so here's Dr. Kevin. All he wants is to to run his own system perfectly, and that's attracting the attention of these incorrect spirits. So who's this male person who has an incorrect spirit in there? It could be a childhood friend who committed suicide. No, it's not checking. Okay. Okay. Is it, but I'm, because there's another male person on the list, I'm going to check for both of these positions. Is it? Is it number two? Is it number three? No. I get the feeling, I could be wrong, I get the feeling that whoever this one is, it's somebody that is known to you at this time. Not someone who's dead, not somebody from childhood. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily someone you're close to. But like me, you see clients. Could be a client. It could be a ex-co-worker who really bullied me in the workplace, which left okay. me to, which caused me to leave. Okay. So is it that person? Yes. Good listening. So here's this colleague. Um, and because you are being perfectly you, 
which is how we like you to be. Yeah. Um, that that person has an incorrect spirit that is badgering you in your subconscious at night. And so you don't want to go to sleep. Okay. So what's their incorrect spirit? I'm just making a note here so we know what to check. I'm going to say self-absorption again. Nah, no, no. I, don't, I don't buy that one. Sorry. Is it on this list? No. Is it in the big four, the big five, or the big six? Ah, it's in the big six. That makes it so easy to check. Big six is what blocks us completing the circuit with spirit, right? So it's belief in I can't, I won't, worry, judgment, unforgiveness, and blame, of which the most popular in human circles is, in fact, blame. Blame. And so this body person, this ex coworker, has some kind of blame going, may not be about you at all, but he has an incorrect spirit of blame and that incorrect spirit of blame is badgering you at night. That's a yes. Wow. Yeah. So you see how this works, people. I mean, I, I'm, I hope I'm making this super, super clear is that in Geotran as a whole, you know, we've got all these really cool codes and I love them. Yeah. But the point is that if you can identify the situation 100%, it will usually just collapse anyway. That's why we're taking it like piece by piece and checking each bit to make sure that our identification is sound. And then we get to throw them out with sound effects. Ready? <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> on, you too, not just me. We. Okay. You know, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have cleared this incorrect spirit of blame coming from the coworker a hundred percent. Yes, we have. Okay. Well, let's find out what this third one is. It's male another male. male. It's another male. Male person. Okay. Is this someone who's in current in your life now? No. In the last five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20, 20 to 30. Okay. We're going to go from the other end. Uh, prior to conception, conceptions were 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 20, 25, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 25. This is someone who was active in your life when you were 25. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't even remember being 25. <laughs> Well, the good news is, is it's all stored somewhere. <laughs> oh my God, that was the that was some of the college years. That was yeah. the end of the college. Um, you know, it, I, I just just go and look, honey. Don't think. Go look. Twenty-five. You were at university, or just coming to the end of university. Somebody you knew socially? No. Somebody in a class? Interesting. I'm getting a neutral on that. Maybe an instructor? Ooh, check an instructor. Wow, most of my instructors were female. Well, that's going to make it even easier to identify this one, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is because. My only male instructor by two. Okay. One was my sign language instructor. Cool. And one was my uh, abnormal psych instructor. Oh. And what was the incorrect spirit that was attacking you because you're perfect? I don't know because it was it was one of those lecture classes where there were like 300 people in it. Yeah, honey, it's not about you. You know okay. it's not about you. It's he's just carrying around this miasm of whatever. And they're telling me it's on this list, so I'm going to find it right now. Okay. And you notice that I'm not even looking at the list. I'm just running my other hand down the list and then I'll do it by numbers. 0 to 100, 100 to 105, 100 to 100. 105, 210, 105, 6, 7, 8. What the heck's that? Worry. Worry. 
worry. Okay. Now remember, worry is praying for what you don't want. Right. Okay. Not that you ever have any worry in your life, of course, Kevin. Oh, yeah. No. No, no. <laughs> So the point is that it's not that the instructor was worried about you. The instructor had some worry going on in his own life. This is like not quite 50 years ago. Yeah, it's not, not about quite, you. but close. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember how old you are, just offhand. I don't care. <laughs> well, a week from tomorrow is another birthday, so... Well, bon anniversaire, joyeux anniversaire. À ce coup. Voilà. I will, I will raise a glass in your honor, if, especially if you remind me. Okay. Now, so, so people, what I want the people watching to understand here is you see the, how sneaky this is. Yeah. Twenty-five. When you were twenty-five, you had an instructor who had worries of his own. And he has an incorrect spirit of worry, and it's just splashing around the landscape. Right? Wow. wow. But somehow it got into your subconscious, and it's still beating you up. Mm -hmm. And so what are we going to do? We Whee! Splat! <laughs> Whoa! Okay. So now I get to ask the question, the post-test question, which is, this body person has anything else creating insomnia in his life. Now, there is something. That's why we always check. So is it something that we identify through this list? Yes. Okay, because it could be something else entirely. I mean, I have no idea. Right. As much as possible when I'm working with people, I really try not to have a preconception about what's bothering them, what the cause is, or how we're going to treat it. Because what I need to do is listen in to their field. Okay. And it will tell me everything we need to know. Yeah. Okay. So one, two, three, four. It's still number four, which is, you know, the badgering part. It's still about perfect. This is a male. This is a female person. Okay. And it's just this, this person is little demon is just hiding in the corner somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Hoping that we would focus on the more obvious stuff. And yeah. you know, now, now we've cleared that out and we're looking in the corners just to make sure. You know, we got to sweep those mice out. <laughs> All right. Who's the female person? I don't have a clue. Sure you do. Close your eyes. Call it up on your computer. This is someone current in your life? No. Is this somebody in the last 10 years or 20 years, 10 to 20 years, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years ago? So is this a client? No. Is this somebody, a member of your family or your extended family? No. Is this someone you know socially, like uh, where you live in California? Yes. So it could be like a neighbor. It could be somebody at the bank. It could be anybody. But here's the part you're really going to find interesting. It's their self-absorption again. Just like the little girl when you were a child. Oh. Yeah, so it's like the, the, the little girl set up a tent that said, self-absorption, welcome here. So this is what? Coming in afterwards. 17 years ago. 17 years ago. Now, you've been living in that same house for a while, right? I've been in I've been in this house for eleven years. Okay, so it was before whatever house you were in before that, before this one. Oh, that would be a neighbor. Yeah. See. Okay. okay. So it's the neighbor you're thinking of. Seventeen years ago, spirit of self-absorption. Throw her out. Wah! It's flat. Okay. <laughs> so now. This body person has anything else from this checklist that is creating insomnia in your life. It's like a no. You're 100% clear for that, right? Okay, fingertips together. Say seal. Seal. To God be the glory forever. Amen. Now, here's the deal. When you go to bed at night, 
shut down your computers. Okay, of course, you're going to ask me, how do we do that? Well, it so happens that that's also on this correction list. <laughs> <laughs> and curiously enough, Dorothy taught us the same prayer that we used to say when I was a little girl, which is, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray you, Lord, my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray you, Lord, my soul to take. We're not actually telling God to take our soul. Right. What we're saying to our computers is, okay, time to shut down. So you can do your processing part. So if you don't care to do it as a prayer, which I would totally understand, because we have different approaches. Right, we do. Then um, what I do sometimes is I'll just say, okay, shut down my computers right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because you have twelve computers in there. And I ask my guides to help. And I said, okay, and we'll reboot in the morning. And yep. then in the morning, even before I get up, I do all my geotran, and it's like. Ah! Yeah. So <laughs> the, make sure you're clear when you go to bed, you know, okay. make, sure, make sure you're clear. You haven't got anything else lurking, waiting to get into your computers. Shut them down, whether by prayer or in whatever way takes your fancy. And what I like to do is I then ask my angels and guides and my, of course, you know, I work with dragons, my angels, guides and dragons to uh, wrap me in white and blue light for protection. Okay. Yeah, so, so these these little gremlins can't get get through that. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that's what I have to say about insomnia. And now I'm handing over to you. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Um, from a hypnotherapy perspective, we look at insomnia in a very different way. Yeah, which is the cool part. Which is the cool part. Yeah. But it also is very similar in many respects. So in the interviewing process, we talk about chemicals, we talk about caffeine, we also talk about sleep hygiene, Ooh. which is what you're talking about. Ooh, I like that. Okay. It's setting yourself up to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So sleep hygiene starts at about one to two hours before bedtime. Okay. And that's where you're starting to wind down. Mm -hmm. You're starting to uh, shut down the computers, but it's a slower process. Okay. So we ask people to avoid taking caffeine or stimulants. Generally. Af generally after dinner. Mm -hmm. Because caffeine stays sense. in the in the system for many hours. And then... Um, stay away from blue light. Yes. Um, blue I have, light goes right back to the retinas. I have my so, blue light glasses that I, because I'm in front of the computer all day, every day. Yeah, and me too. I have blue light filters on my glasses. So, and then on my computer, there's a, there's a blue filter. Oh, well, that's a good idea. So it makes everything look a little orangey. But I don't care. And it's also the the flickeriness, right, of the computers right. and your smartphone. Right. And televisions. I mean, I don't have a television, but I understand many people do. It seems to be a very popular thing. Yeah. Um, so, and we typically, we typically sit in front of the TV, but um, <laughs> we were talking last night and I said, I'm becoming like my father. I turn the TV on and I turn off. So I go to sleep when the TV turns on. <laughs> you think we could utilize this. <laughs> <laughs> so many times I'm found sleeping in front of the TV <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> now I would not normally recommend having your television in it's your bedroom. Not recommended at all <laughs> because the flickering of the light. Uh, and the intensity of the light mm -hmm. will keep people awake. Mm -hmm. I do know of people that can't sleep unless the TV's on. And I think the reason is, is that they have too many, I'm not using the word voices in a abnormal way. Mm -hmm. but they have too much going on in the head and they can't yes. turn off. So it's so like white noise. Yeah. So the TV is like white noise. 
and it enables them to, to wipe off. To Dr. Kevin, do you see the question that we have right there on the screen? No, we oh, won't be doing hypnotherapy. It says, will Dr. Kevin hypnotize us today? Not today. Ah. Not today. We're, we're uh, running. We we're really running wanted to go over hypnotherapy. this information. Yeah. Um, but I am available for, for private consultations. So, and, and if I can just throw in my two, two panel worth there, um, Dr. Kevin actually created a, I think it was like a 15 minute. I don't know. Once, once I'm under, I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> About a 15, 20 minute. 15, 20 audio. minute um, audio that, that if I'm having trouble sleeping, um, just takes me under with beautiful ease. And yeah. I know that he, you know, he's available to do that if you have specific. Right. I am available to do that. Um, I am available for consultation and uh, we will do hypnosis at that time. But today um, there just wasn't enough time to work it into the schedule. So um, in hypnotherapy, what we do a lot is visualization. Mm. And visualizing being in a serene place. Visualizing being in your serene place. Yes. Visualizing yourself sleeping. And take, going through steps to begin to turn off the computers, like you're saying. Yes. But we do that through hypnosis. And usually it's through visualization. Um, also, we address what the under what could be the underlying cause stress anxiety mm -hmm. um dealing with with the anxiety or the stress the anger um so dealing with it, some of the underlying emotional causes for hypnosis yeah and um it's interesting because i am aware in the in the Wicca uh, religion mm -hmm. or the, in the Wicca beliefs, they do believe in, in demons and spirits that will um, enter your mind and enter your body. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that is, that is supported in many different cultures and religions. Well, absolutely. I mean, I and, so <laughs> in that case, I will ask the client to seek out assistance from their religious leaders and their, their leaders and spiritual guides mm -hmm. and get their help as well. And like what you did with the clearings, it's very similar. Mm. Um, so from my perspective, we're looking at more of the scientific, more of the medical background of it and the mm -hmm. causes of it. When it comes to substance abuse, that really, even though I am certified in substance abuse, I really seek the help <laughs> of counselors that are formally trained further trained in that to, to help so are you is, is what you are saying then that in your experience substance abuse has a strong link with insomnia it does ah it does uh-huh so some of the substances that people ingest are uppers mm -hmm. and really get them wound up so they may not sleep for days. Yeah. So getting the help, the medical help and the and the psychiatric help is really something that I refer my clients to. I stay with the client and we will work on the hypnotherapy piece. And from my experience, uh, it's about five to eight sessions. Hmm. And then usually between the first and the second session we'll have a two week gap mm -hmm. because what we have found is that when people are dealing with substances 
then there's about a 17 day gap where they begin to reutilize. And so spacing yeah. out the hypnotherapy to yeah. about day 14 will mm -hmm. reinforce the, uh, the previous hypnotherapy and also okay. giving recordings so that people can listen to the recordings yes. throughout the week helpful. helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's rather interesting because people have so many people have so many different reasons for having insomnia. Well, I think that's really the point uh, and why we wanted to, to look at it from our differing perspectives. Right. Is that, um, you know, we, insomnia sounds like such a simple thing. You know, I can't sleep. However, right. like every other physical condition, it can come from a number of different directions and sometimes several at once. Right. So, uh, you know, whenever I'm working with someone who has, who has physical or health issues and, you know, bearing in mind, I'm, I'm not a physician myself. What I'm always looking for is what, what's really the root cause here? You know, where did this start? Is it even your issue? Um, what can we move around energetically which is then going to have a, a, a pretty significant and, my, in my experience, pretty immediate right. impact on symptom relief. And then also, if we have taken out the cause, then the symptoms are, are much easier to treat. They're much more likely right. um, to be treated effectively on the physical level. Right. And some of the research I've read, it's talking about chemical imbalances. Mm, yes. And the chemic, the hormones that deal with allowing us to sleep might be deficient. You might have insufficient amount, mm -hmm. or you might have an overabundance of hormones that are the alerting hormones. Indeed. So and these are meant to work together as a system. And sometimes the system itself is simply out of balance. Right. So that it's not triggering, you know, A it's, is not triggering B correctly. Right. It, yeah. It's they're not balanced. And so when when you go to lay down, there is an area of the brain that begins to trigger the hormones for you to begin to sleep. Mm. And the act of sleeping is a process. Yes. It's not a simple sort of clunk. It's not where you just close your eyes and off you go. The brain goes through a sequence. And like what you mentioned, um, sometimes that sequence gets glitched by the computers. And so it's getting rid of those, getting rid of that glitch. Yes. And so again, your system works really cool and it works really well. And my system takes a little bit longer. Yeah. And it requires a little bit more involvement from other people and getting their help as well. And it all depends on what the actual causes of that individual's insomnia might be. Right. I did have a psychiatrist that approached me who deals specifically in insomnia and sleep ah. disturbances and is working with a lot of veterans Ah. who saw battle, who were... Right. I was going to say trauma, in, absolutely. In battle. And so they have PTSD. And so that really interferes with their sleep cycles. Sure. So he did approach me to help him. Unfortunately, the funding <laughs> didn't work out to my mm -hmm. favor. So, um, so unfortunately, there's still a great need among different populations. And there's a huge population of veterans Yes. That have insomnia. Yeah. yeah and well, go ahead. Well, when, I think this PTSD angle is really, really significant. I'm so glad you brought that up. In Geotran, when we look at PTSD, we see it because we tend to see everything in terms of, of computers, right? Right. It's just our analogy. It works for us. I'm, I'm not, not saying it's the only way to look at stuff, obviously. But PTSD means that there's a file. And that file will always attempt to run itself again, mm -hmm. like, like, a, like a, 
a TSR program, a Terminate State Resident program, right? So it's there, and what it is, it thinks it's doing something to help you. Yes. These files are not malicious. No. Unlike these incorrect spirits. Yeah, the incorrect yeah. spirits are actually malicious. Yeah. Um, so, but the but if if we can even get, at least get the person to understand that the file is not malicious in itself and that it's possible to delete those files so that they or to reassure the mechanism that your needs and requirements for safety for instance right yeah right are being met and yeah. that they don't have to do it because they can only do it one way they yeah. only have this one way of keeping you safe. Let's assuming that safety is a part of what's going on here. Right. Um, and so if you can deal with that core need differently, then usually we can persuade the file to go away or yes. to stay in the background. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, we are, we are not dismissing you. We are not criticizing you. Oh, file. We are offering you retirement with benefits. Right, right. Maybe you'd like to go and help someone else. <laughs> 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 but this person is already, you know, it's already being dealt with, uh, is already being protected, is already safe, is already whatever. So it's so it's, and here's where I think it connects with uh, uh, the hypnotherapy, if I may be so bold. Mm -hmm. is that we are rearranging the significance of that experience or yes. that memory or that belief. We're, we're reformatting yes. their interpretation of that experience. Yes. yes. And we're taking the urgency out of it. Yes. And allowing them to reformat it and to experience it in a different way. Yes. So, so a way that is that is hopefully more immediately beneficial or protective. It's more or beneficial to them. Doing. It is just completely reformatting it. Yeah. Rather than hearing gunfire, they're hearing a car backfire. Right. Or maybe they're hearing the popping of popcorn. Yeah. Do you remember when you were a kid, did you have that popcorn that was in the sort of foil packet and you sort of had yes. it? Yes. Like Jiffy Pop. Pop. Jiffy yeah. Pop. I think was Oh, I haven't yeah. been out for a long time. <laughs> but you, that, and that was fun. That was a big treat when we yeah. had that. Yeah. It was so much fun to watch it. But it was, you know, as childhood, when popcorn's popping, that's a fun experience. Right. And if you've been to combat and you were in gunfire, popping refers to something else. And it refers to danger. Exactly. It refers to being hyper alert. Yeah. And your adrenaline is flowing at full speed. So in hypnotherapy, we reformat that. Because the, your system, if I understand how it works, and I think this, re, this overlaps quite a bit with your understanding. Right. Um, the file, when it, when it opens up again, when it replays itself, what it is attempting to do is to give you a similar emotional result. Yeah. So the hypervigilance, the alertness, the protection, that's what it's trying to do. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's when, if we can say to it, okay, this mechanism, the popping sound, the file itself, the trigger, the trigger, yeah, the trigger, could mean this other thing yes yeah then it then possibly it in your system it will no longer have the need right to bring in the hyper alertness and the adrenaline and all the the rest of it because it's now saying oh this is this sound is actually associated with something fun yes instead yes. so the result it gets to because the mechanism changes the result gets to be different as well correct so yeah. you change you change the trigger it changes the response yeah just so and then you give you pile on uh oh that's a great response oh thank you for sharing that with me oh you know 
the, the, the positive feedback. So, so one of the things that, that, that we do in Geotrend in dealing with trauma and trauma response, for instance, is firstly, we will go back and change the situation by visualization, for instance, but also we will say to that embodiment of that energy or that experience or that memory, we'll say something like, you know, you've done such a great job for this person over the last 40 years. Now, would you, would you like to retire? Would you like a gold plaque? <laughs> Can we open some champagne for you? Yeah. Would you like as a reward right. for having done this good thing all of this time? Right. And, right. and we use that also for uh, when people have split personalities. Yeah. I don't yes. work with split personality too much. I don't know where maybe split personalities is not exactly the way I'm I'm looking for a specific term that we use in Geotran. It's not split personalities, but it's a it's a moment when you're under severe stress and it's just just associative response. Yeah, it's it's like a, you 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 create a part of you right that only can do certain things. Yeah. Right. So let's say you're a little kid and you're getting beaten up and you you create a part of you called Big Brother and Big Brother is very protective. And but the only thing that Big Brother knows how to do is to shout at people and hit them. Well, right. that's OK when you're six. But if you're 36 or 56 or in my case, 66, this is really not the best response. It's not the best. So what we say is we go back to that split soul mm -hmm. and we say, how can we reward you? for this thing that you have been doing for us exactly this positive thing exactly. so not not how can we suppress you or how can we yeah. criticize you or judge you but yeah. you did a great job not needed anymore here here's this hot air balloon if you'd like if that's what yeah. takes your fancy <laughs> yeah and i also want to mention that ptsd is not only just for veterans oh no PTSD oh, is experienced right. by a huge number of people for a variety of traumas. It's really true. And tr a variety of overstress and anxieties that may have happened in other ways. Yes, that is certainly and true. So it's not just veterans. The, the advantage of using veterans as our example. Well, is that that's something that people can see very they can easily. Relate to. They can and they can relate to it. Yeah. Um, but really, it's looking at exactly the same thing. Is is there an external trigger that is keeping you up at night? Yes. Basically, because remember, our our theme here tonight is today is actually insomnia. Insomnia. So if Anything there is if there night. is a past experience where a trigger it brings out a negative response yeah that results in keeping you awake from anxiety or stress or mm -hmm. you know remembering going back to past memories then um, geotran and hypnotherapy can help yes they can that's and it helps tremendously. And you know what? In our next program, I don't know when this is going to be broadcast, but in our next program, we are going to be looking at addiction. We and are. You can see how addiction, insomnia, and PTSD all kind of marry yeah, and tag together. team. But for, unfortunately, for now, we it's we're at 59 minutes. How did that happen? Wow. We so, had so much fun. Yes, we did. Got any last words? Go forth and sleep. <laughs> That's <laughs> the plan. But <laughs> only after watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can get, if you have specific insomnia questions or issues, you can talk to me on Facebook or on my, you know, my website. I'm Dr. Kira Deft at gmail.com. And of course, Dr. Kevin is also on his website, Dr. Kevin Richardson Therapy. Or, and he's on Facebook. So, and my Gmail account is Kevin Richardson Therapy at gmail.com. See, consistent branding. That's what we're all about. 
Yes, we are. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I'm ready to go to the cafe. Me too. And we'll see you Do next I week. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm not French. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>